Welcome to the Game Room. This episode, we're taking a look at Roll for Lasers, a museum security roll and write game. Before, we need to point out that Brian Shoemaker provided us a laminated review copy of Roll for Lasers. Our Roll for Lasers was designed by Kevin Dunkelberg and Brian Shoemaker. Features art from Eric Steed. Uh, funded on Kickstarter literally earlier today and is being published by Glass Shoe Games. Roll for Lasers plays two to four players, with each game taking half an hour to an hour, possibly longer, very much dependent on player AP or analysis paralysis. Now, there are three versions of this game that will be available. There is a dry erase board version, a laminated version, and a print and play version. Now, the copy that I got to preview was a laminated version. So this one is a bit too simple for us to have bothered with an unboxing video. All that you get with a copy of Roll for Lasers is one sheet board, a 66, a dry erase marker, a set of dice, and one page instruction sheet. Yeah, so this is dead simple. Like This is a bare bones game. But I do want to comment on something rather confusing about the board. So the board is a 12 by 12 grid separated into four regions, each of which is color coded for no reason that I can figure out. Added to that, it has an assortment of museum displays depicted in some of the squares on the grid, but these are so faded out you can barely see them, which I guess makes sense because they serve no purpose at all. And it's interesting because the, the art for the game, uh, as you can actually see right up above us there, um, you can see all these exhibits quite clearly. Uh, they're, they're very definitely there. But as that would impact the gameplay and the, your ability yeah. to play the game, they are faded to almost nothingness. Uh, and it's interesting because despite the fact that they are faded away to almost nothingness, um, the Kickstarter really goes on. And, and you know, there's been interest and, 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 and challenges in creating these museum displays. Yeah. So enough about this somewhat confusing artistic choice, and we'll move on to how to play. So at the start of the game, each player picks a corner to start in. If you're playing two-player, they have to be opposite. Each round starts with players rolling 66. And then you're going to pair up the dice. Each pair indicates a coordinate on the grid, right? Your X, Y. Starting outward from your corner. So from your corner up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And from your corner left or right, depending on which corner you're in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At each coordinate pair, you're going to draw a target, which is a little circle. And you're going to place up to three. So, I mean, nothing, sim nothing sim uh, difficult at all. The basics are you, you roll coordinates and draw something on the board. Yep. Now, after all players have placed up to three targets, you roll 66 again. This time you're placing mirrors. These are a slash in a square, right? Running diagonal. Lasers, which are going to be fired in the next round, are going to reflect off these at 90 degree angles, orthogonally, just how you expect a laser to go. Mirrors are placed the same as targets. You're going to use dice pairs to place coordinates. You're going to place up to three for each player. Now, can you angle these mirrors in any format you want? Well, yeah, you can go either way. Like, yeah. there's the two options. That's yeah. <laughs> it. Cross this way or cross that way. But it, so it is. It is a choice you're allowed yeah. to make. So you're you're told where, but you can pick which angle. Yes. Okay. Well, you're also picking where, right? Because you've got six yeah. dice to pick from. You're pairing up your dice. Now, finally, you go back to the start player. You're going to roll sixty-six again, but this time you're firing lasers. You can fire up the three lasers. The difference here, though, is it can be from any row or column counted off from your corner all the way up to spot 12. And any number of dice can be combined. So if you had a 1, 3, and 6, you could combine those to fire from the 10 spot on either your X or Y axis. Now, lasers aren't drawn, because if you did, it'd be a terrible mess. You just trace the path with your finger. With the laser turning 90 degrees at every mirror hit, one point scored for every target that's passed through, and you get multiple points if you can pass through the same target more than once. You're going to fire up the three lasers. What's important to note here that you may not have caught, and I didn't even get when I was first reading how to play this game, is that no one owns anything on the board. All these targets and mirrors that have been drawn affects all the players, and you get points for hitting any targets, not just your own. So this is why we, we mentioned AP earlier on, because everything that's on the board is in play for yeah. everybody for the rest of the game. Correct. And so the the... After your, your your first round might not be too bad, but things escalate as the game continues. Yes, because that first scoring round, you're going to turn the board 90 degrees. And everything starts over from the top with you now controlling in a different corner, which, depending on your player count, probably already has stuff in it. 
Uh, players are going to add three more targets. You're going to add three more mirrors. You're going to fire your lasers again. You can do this for a total of three rounds with four players or four rounds with less than four players. At the end of the game, the player with the most points combined over all the rounds wins the game. So, I mean, again, nothing difficult. The game itself is a very basic concept, but because of the interaction between all these aspects uh, put down on the board in every round, the complexity really ramps up high. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not your, this is not as, as simple, uh, quote unquote, as, you know, black box, mm -hmm. which, no. <laughs> which isn't a simple game in yeah, the first that's... place. Uh, and this takes this up a whole other level on beyond mm -hmm. that. Now, added to those basic rules, there are a couple special rules. One is every round players can reroll any number of dice once. Now, this is over a whole round. So if you reroll when you're placing targets, you can't reroll when firing lasers. And then there are 12 special powers included in the game. And each game, you're going to select three of them to use. Or you can determine randomly, pick them, whatever. Each of these can only be used once per game. They do all kinds of things. Like there's a splitter that looks like a diamond and it sends lasers off both directions, both 90 degrees. There's an orthogonal, um, sorry, fires off both orthogonal directions. There's a mirror that will reflect the laser straight back. There's get additional re-rolls. There's a large mirror that can go over three squares and so on. Like I said, there's 12 of these. And that's it. That's the game. It's draw targets, draw mirrors, fire lasers, draw targets, draw mirrors, fire lasers, add up your points at the end. So, I, again, you know, nothing much to it, but I think one of the really confusing things is the marketing about this game. Uh, if you actually read the, the marketing uh, spiel, they talk about all the exhibits and protecting exhibits, and your goal is to, is to protect these exhibits within the museum from thieves by having the best security system. And none of that exists in the game. No. It's, it, it's, the game is good. I, I think the game is really interesting. Uh, but, but none of it has to do with any of the marketing material surrounding the game. And, yeah. and, and that's confusing and possibly concerning. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an odd choice. Like, as for the game, like, the game, gameplay is simple and, like, easy to teach and play. We just did it. We taught you all the rules. You know how to play. The only thing you might not know is what all the different special abilities are. But the basic gameplay, you got it. We just did it. The thing is, it's deceptively simple, right? Like, it sounds like Sean keeps stressing it, and that's just it. Like, the first round, it's not bad, but it just ramps up. Like, once you get to the second and later rounds where you're drawing in quadrants that other people have already added stuff to and trying to plan ahead and putting targets and trying to block, oh, it's so much to think about. Especially because, again, you're, you're never going to know where you're firing your laser from. You have a good idea, yeah. you, you, and you've got a lot of flexibility, so you can mm -hmm. work, guess at where you'll be firing, but you're not going to know for sure. So you're planning to help yourself and hurt somebody else, except three rounds from now, you also need to think about mm -hmm. how that's going to and where yes. you're going to be firing from, and, and it really boggles the mind. Yeah, and then there's the probabilities, right? Like you're you're th you're going to be able to shoot one through five almost guaranteed, right? One through six because you're probably going to roll all those numbers. But to be honest, ones if you don't roll a single one, like I don't actually yeah. know the bell curve on three d six. I think the average rolls a ten. So, like, because because the other thing is you're rolling six, you could technically combine four of those dice to get the spot you want, and then just use single dice for there because you can combine the dice in any combination. Like that just boggles the mind for what probabilities. And yeah, because I know 10, 11, I've had it. Ten eleven hmm? is three d six. 10, 11 is 3d6, so probably 12, 13 or something is 4d6. I don't even know, right? And that's way up the board. I, overall, though, what this means is this game is, uh, we were talking about an earlier review, Breakdancing Meeple, how it's not a thinky filler. This is. Queen. This is very much heavier and thinkier than you think, which I think is a good and a bad thing. Because on the positive side, this can become like chess like like that that whole like in later rounds trying to predict where your opponents are placing and figuring out the optimal pass and your mirrors to be able to bounce around the right way and then toss the right special object in so that it's a mirror and it bounces everything back through the points again like and figuring out the path can like if you get one that's worth a lot of points it's very rewarding you get that i made a great move i, I did this this is awesome on the bad side this can be a ton of ap longer play time than you'd expect and a ton of downtime now the designer has called me out on this supposedly and that is that it's theoretically possible for multiple players to be drawing on the board at once 
And yeah, I guess theoretically, but it's a single sheet of paper. Like it's an eight and a half, 11 by sheet. And even with just two of us, we found we were getting in each other's way. Yeah. So if you're looking for like a 15 minute quick game, this is not that. This is not at all. Maybe take a break dancing meeple if you want like a 10 minute quick game. This is a thinky filler that stretches the time limit. Like I'm, I'm tempted to not even call it a filler at this point. So I think this game to me is a game that uh, shouldn't necessarily be thought of a sit down, uh, thought of as a sit down and play game. One of the ways that I think this would be a fantastic game to play <laughs> is if you threw it up on the on the you know refrigerator, and mm. one of you in the morning as you're sitting down having your coffee went through and worked out their turn and the next person when they had time on their lunch sat down and worked out their turn and then and everyone sits down after dinner and does a scoring round um and and just drew it out and and because it would the the again you've got that potential for ap and Mm -hmm. you don't want to be either rushed or feeling like you're dragging everyone else down playing it where i so i think taking this game out of the sit down game concept has some real potential for it yeah, I can see that. What, like what I, Deanna and I were talking about was why I was thinking this would be really good for is because you don't need much, right? It's it's a sheet of paper, especially if you have the print and play. Like you don't even need the laminate sheet. You can just have a sheet of paper. You can fold it up. You throw it in your back pocket. Or you throw it in your glove box. And then when you're out for coffee, you're out for a couple drinks, you break this one out. Because all you need is a dry erase marker. Or if you're playing the print and play, just a pencil. You need a pencil in 66 and the sheet. And you can play anywhere. Like that, that's where I think this game could shine. Although I don't now know about I do, with adult beverages. <laughs> eh, I, well, you might, it, it might make the game quicker or longer. It could go either way. <laughs> now I do have a few other minor complaints and these made me think the game just could have used a bit more development and a bit more play testing. Like there are play testers credited and everything. So I think that the, 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 the designer at least played with their friends. I don't know how many other people saw it. Just little things like the score sheets on the map. And there is no way to track your individual laser fire. So you have to remember, okay, on my first laser, I hit three. On my second laser, I hit seven. And on my last laser, I hit six. What's that total up to? Like, we end up just using a strap piece of paper. But, like, why there isn't, like, a divider on the score sheet that just shows put your three laser scores and your total. Just something like little like that. Um, I think there should have been something to randomize the special abilities because it says pick them randomly. But, like, just give me a chart. Like, there's 12 of them. Or make it so there's only 11 and make it 2d6. It would have been really simple. Of course, 2d6 favors the middle numbers at 7. So, I don't know. Just that would have been nice. Uh, The special abilities themselves seem to greatly vary in how useful they are. Um, We had games where no one used any. Like, we picked three random ones and no one used a single one of them. Um, I would have liked a grid of numbers on the map, just like one through six in each of the quadrants. I can count past six, but just something it, it speeds up play. I don't have to count one, two, three, four by five. That would have been kind of nice to see. Um, just little things. Um, rerolls. Rerolls seem really powerful, but it seems like if you don't use it, because there's a, you should get something for that. Like Deanna suggested, like if I don't use my reroll, I should get a point. Like there should be some reward for not using your rerolls. It just, I don't know, it just needed more balance. It needed a, just, it just feels close. Like it feels like it's it's not quite at a level of completion that if I was producing this game, I would have released it. I I think I think this is a great start of a game. Yeah. Um, what I would love to see um, is is a digital version of this emerge because uh, I could see this as being something that you and I you know have open on on a mm-hmm. window and, and and are taking turns you know throughout the day or or on BGA or something. Uh, really easily and that mm-hmm. takes away all of your problems about the scoring and and the mm-hmm. fiddling and the the, not the the piece of paper not being big enough for multiplayer on uh if, if you move that into a digital it becomes way easier mm-hmm. plus it takes away the problem of accidentally you know moving in the wrong direction when you bounce yeah. off something you don't have to worry about that anymore you know computers are good at straight lines and lasers <laughs> yep no totally correct like, overall, we had fun. I, I dig it. This is a neat game. Roll for Lasers is a neat game. Um, I, I, again, I think it's really neat how portable, how little is required to play is, is a nice touch. The thing is, like, I, I can see playing it at a coffee shop. I can see doing what you're talking about on the fridge. But I can't see that often going, hey, let's all sit down, four of us in my game room, and play Roll for Lasers. Like, it's just not the kind of game I can see breaking out on game night to play at home. Like, if I'm going to spend an hour to an hour and a half playing something that makes my brain burn, there are other more involved games I would probably break out. 
yeah. stuff that like a feast for Odin with two players or getting into in a previous review, we brought up food chain magnet, right? Like if I'm going to go thinky and I'm going to go brain burn, I might as well, and I'm home, I might as well, you know, pull out a game with lots of components and bits and gameplay. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting one because it's probably one of the higher weighted low, easy, you know, portable yeah. light game like it, for a, for a really light game. It's it it isn't rated yet on BG uh, no. on BGG, but it's got some real weight to it because of that uh, analysis paralysis issue and and the number of combinations and potential in there, but because it's just you know paper and dice mm-hmm. paper and pencil and some dice, it doesn't feel as fulfilling as setting out a copy of Brass Lancashire mm. and playing for the night. Oh, exactly. And then, of course, is that my main complaint about this game is the one Sean brought up earlier is the missed opportunity. Like, there's this artwork. It's a museum. Like, there's why why give me pictures of exhibits? And each of the four quadrants is a different hall. Like, there's I, I know there's the Egyptian hall, and like like there's design work that went in there, and there's nothing. Like, it, it just feels like there should be something. Again, that just feels like it's not quite developed enough. Like, just something really simple. Like, if your target is over an exhibit, you get two points instead of one. At least then there's a reason. It anything. just feels like it needs <laughs> anything. Yeah, something. Now, I do have to say, and th- this is probably the, the biggest selling point of this game, the print-and-play version is a dollar. A dollar for the PBF. And we definitely had way more than a dollar's worth of fun with this game. Like, I, I have played much worse games that I've paid more money for. Like, with the print-and-play, you literally print off a sheet whenever you feel like playing, or print off a few, fold them up, toss them in your purse, toss them in the glove box, break it out next time you're going to go for coffee, have a copy up on your fridge with a magnet, right? Like, just print off as many as you need. I, I don't see why not. Or the other thing you might even be able to do in this, wow, you want to talk about brain burn, you got four players, play four games at once, then there's no downtime, because everyone's playing their own board, and then you pass the sheet to the next person. That actually could be quite fun. That might be a good tournament game, actually, to be honest. But like, for a buck, come on. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the Kickstarter is done, so I don't know what the price will be when the final game comes out. The print and play should still always be a buck, but like the laminated copy was two dollars plus shipping. It wasn't an expensive thing. Um, we're not going to get into the vagaries of the the, the Kickstarter itself because it's it was a little unique, I will say, for a Kickstarter, but it's done now. Yeah, and I have to say, you know, if you do enjoy the game, um, you know, it's. Besides the price, uh, uh, or you know, the mounted version, if which I'm sure will be available, uh, eventually, is is a really great and solid investment for this game mm. that makes it you know easy to play and and not as portable. But you no. know, if it does turn into a game you play at home somehow, it it's great. I could see you know, mounting it on the wall, and yeah. again, rather than the fridge, you've got it mounted on the wall, and you walk there up you and go. you can, uh, you know, you can draw your draw your turn in. Now, what I will admit I would love to see, and I think they could make really good money on, is a someone take Ket the laser game and, and make this. Because Ket is a physical game that someone, I think, think Fun produces it, which is a version of laser chess. Give me an actual laser. Give me actual mirrors. Give me targets that, put, that get put out there that if they get hit by a laser, they light up somehow. Give me that in physical version, and this could do fantastic. That, to me, is what should have been kickstarted. Like, to me, that's a Kickstarter. I need to raise lots of money to do this, but it'll be awesome if it happened. Absolutely. I would love to see a physical version of this. Like, uh, this is physical, but, you know, a three-dimensional, yeah. toyerific. I, I would be all for a toyerific version of Roll for Lasers, like Ket the Laser Game and other, other versions. Now, I know that we're working on something for con season, and unfortunately this year we didn't have a con season. So I, I am hoping maybe next year this is something we'll see. But I think that was just going to be a con prop to sell laminated sheets of paper. <laughs> like, really? Well, for a deeper dive into Roll for Lasers, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews. So let's take a moment to check in with the lobby in our chat room here on Twitch. All right, we got thoughts on Roll for Lasers. I saw some stuff go by. We actually had some chat about this one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, you know, super portable. Great for killing time sitting out somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, somewhere else. Like, not in my game room with everyone focused on it. I, this is the worst game I have ever played for me grabbing my phone. And then then I'm missing out on stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Because Dan is just like, I got eight points. I'm like, wait, how did you get eight points? Like, I'm just, <laughs> like, you kind of have to edit aud- well, yeah, especially- audit each other. Especially because you know you're not you're not drawing in the the laser line. Exactly, you're just moving your finger, 
and that's where you know that computer would would super help yeah. because you do you know that oh if you fire a laser here whatever the computer tells me is right i'm not yeah. i don't have to worry about that anymore now i gotta admit like there's no laser physics here right it's all 90 degrees it's all yeah. straight 90 degree turns like it's not hard there's, there's no although weird... well when you get into some of the specials though and you're you, all of a sudden yeah, your lasers are branching off in yes. three directions that is where it know, gets hard i think to be honest get a little that crazy. is crazy but yeah, like I, I have never spent so much time on a phone, my phone during a game. Like I was on Twitter, I was on Facebook. Like I, I was having a hard time with the downtime in this one. And like I said, they say you can both do it at once. But the other thing I was finding is some of your decisions are going to be based on what the other players place. Yep. And they're telling you go, go real time. But then if you want, you can make people go ahead of you. And I'm like, eh. though I don't know if it makes it more playable and I can get done in half an hour, maybe I would go for it. But like, I think you need the big mounted board or something. Or, like, if you had a small, like, if you're at the second cup, those little round tables, yep. then maybe two people could use that sheet of paper at once. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. There's, there's like, you're in your own quadrant, especially four players trying to do it. I yeah. get it in theory. I, like I said, the designer says that's how it was designed to play. I love, I do love your idea of like, put it on the fridge, right? Like, just stop yeah. by, fill it in. Of course, there's a lot of trust required there, but. <laughs> Um, the, the dice coordinate system is actually kind of brilliant. Yeah, no, especially I, the fact the lasers can go past six. Yeah, there's then, some there's some great ideas in this game. It's 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 super solid, but there's also just some I don't understand like weird what you design did moments. choices and yeah, yeah, smudging. Uh, d- d- yeah, well, that brings too, up yeah. smudging. That's definitely if you're if you're leaning over and, and and reaching or you know moving around, especially once you're past that first round and you've already got a, a quadrant done. Yeah. Um, Sounds like a science class laser experience rather than a museum. I, Pennywise says that. Oh, and I totally absolutely. agree. Absolutely. Like there's the other thing too is it talks about how your goal is to cover as much of the thing in the end. Like that almost makes me wish you did draw the lasers and you lose one point for every empty square in your zone or something. Yeah. Like there's just something. And then uh, one of the things um, Hungry Gamer suggested in their review was if you were able to surround an exhibit with lasers, yeah. that should be worth something. Like there's, but then like without drawing them, you'd have to like somehow track your three lasers to see what got, like I can get why they didn't do some of this because oh, yeah. it would add even more to it, but I don't but, know. But yeah, like the con- the concept again, back to that PR, their PR material, a handsome sum awaits the, for the team who can best demonstrate how they will safeguard us from greedy robbers. Yeah. yeah I don't, the, I don't the theme doesn't matter. I, I don't know. To be means. honest, though, it's an abstract pasted on themes on abstracts is a thing. It but doesn't bother me that it's the fact there's art that's not used. Like why is there even art? Why well, isn't it's it just, just a that grid? they're like doubling down and, and leaning so heavily? If they just yeah. said, "Hey, this is a museum," and you're well, they hired lasers. someone to write the theme. Oh yeah, there is someone yeah. literally credited to write the theme. They paid someone. Well, I don't know what they paid them, but they, they at least paid them an exposure <laughs> to write the theme for them. Yeah, no, they. I mean, they've gone into like they're doubling down on this yeah. concept and the theme behind it, and the 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 different sections and what they mean mm-hmm. and what exhibits they are. Which... So here's here's a good comment from Deanna that I think sells it better than anything else. There's got to be something there because you're talking about it, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I want to play this again. <laughs> there we go. Sounds fun, but it needs more. If I want a filler grid game, I'll play Cartographers. I haven't played Cartographers. I've heard good things. Um, Deanna noting playing four games at once here, your brain would melt on fire. And, and I don't yeah. know. If, I don't think it'd be any worse because it's not like you remember where things are. Yeah. Like you're passing it, and it'd just be a new situation to react to. Yeah, and D, D sums up my comment, my thoughts really well. Pasted on theme doesn't bug me, but the theme as written in detail, yeah, doesn't fit anything. Yeah, like admit it's, it's pasted on <laughs> instead of keep yeah, trying to just, push just it. Just say, hey, you've got a museum, and you're designing a laser system for it. Done. Yeah. Period. <laughs> but yeah, and stretch goals to to add new exhibits that do nothing. Yeah. I, yeah we, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Like, even the color-coded. It's not like I play green because next turn I rotate the board. Yep. Like, why did they color-code code it? I like, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. But it's such a great concept. Like, it, it just, is. I it don't is. know. It just it's... needed the, something to make it great. It's neat. It's good. It, yep. It's worth playing. But it's just, uh Two-player, it's particularly good, too, because you get rid of one row, so you're playing a 10 by 10 grid. Right. And sixes are wild, which makes it so much easier to play stuff where you want. Right. 